Hey friends, happy Tuesday. It's Talkie Tuesday here in the studio. I'm Dory Patrick. I am a full-time working mixed media artist. Um, we missed last week because we were busy celebrating the holiday, but um, I love to kind of share what I'm up to here in the studio, just little news and tidbits, um, everything kind of artsy related and talky. <laughs> Welcome back. So we are well into September now, which is, isn't that crazy? I mean, it's crazy. <sighs> uh, yeah. So the, you can tell that the new season is coming. Um, we love fall here. It's like our favorite, I think. We really love summer, but um, fall seems to be when like the hubby and I got married and we bought this house in the fall. And it's a time of um, some really happy milestones in our lives. So we really love the fall too. Um, and I like the crispness in the air. And uh, so we're in that weird in between season where it's not quite time to, you know, put the shorts away. These are baby shorts that I'm wearing, <laughs> but you're wearing a long sleeve on your morning walk and it's kind of that weird time of year where you don't know what to wear. You know what I mean? And I can also tell the seasons are changing because my head often feels like it's going to explode. I'm one of those lucky people that get migraines and uh, season changes will bring them on for me. So it'll be a couple of weeks probably of adjusting to the to the new season and but you know still it's it's a good time. It's a good time. Um let's see. Uh since I talked to you last, we really have just been um doing our daily routine around here. Um I am full blown back into uh, production mode. So I have some shows coming up and uh, need to replenish some of my painting inventory as well as my paper inventory um, products like prints and cards. I'm like out of a lot of stuff in my Etsy for like the greeting cards and stuff. So I'm trying to get that done. Um, what else? Oh, Callie Mae caught her first chipmunk finally a few days ago. That was very exciting. Well, the first one we know about. I mean, who knows? Maybe she's maybe she's been grabbing one every night when she goes out <laughs> to do her body. But um it was kind of traumatic, but she was very happy and very pleased with herself and very excited. And so she is even more obsessed now than she was before. You know, she's got the taste for it now. So <laughs> it's like every time we go in the backyard, she is on it. A little obsessive, but anyway, um, she has been getting back to her daycare days with her friends, which is really nice for her. And she and I have started a little routine of um, getting... Uh, so on off gym days, so hubby and I do weightlifting and gym stuff three days a week. And so on the off days where I don't go to the gym, I take her to a local park that has a lovely walking, wide walking trail. And, um, she has been loving that. We hop in the car to go there and she just, she loves it. It's kind of this exciting new thing for her, but, and for me, come to think of it. Um, we see geese there and it's all very exciting, but, um, yeah. And I think that's really it for news. I'm going to turn the camera around and just kind of show you some of what's going on in the studio, some things I'm working on. And then, um, one of you asked me a question about uh making paints more transparent um 
And I'm going to share some tips on how I do that. I've got some examples in a um, sketchbook that we can pull up and uh, play around a little bit. So I'll probably switch the camera angle here in a little bit and uh, we'll review that. Orders coming in um, of supplies that I have needed to replenish. So certain size canvases that I like to have on hand, I've replenished those um, gel medium that I've needed. It seems like, I don't know if you find this too, and I find this also with my cosmetic items and toiletries like I run out of everything all at the same time <laughs> it's like all of a sudden everything I need is gone and I so I'm I'm either not shopping at all or I'm shopping a lot that kind of seems to be how it goes um so this week has been lots of boxes coming in so the studio is a mess on in between working on pieces I am also unpacking orders and trying to put everything away um, that's about it really nothing too exciting uh, just plugging away on my work I mean I'm work I'm working on some things that are exciting me that's I'm um, diving into some uh, figurative work that is really exciting me a lot. And I'll show you a couple of um, pieces that I've been working on. Um, so the work is exciting. Um, life is just sort of day-to-day, um, -day simple, and we love it that way. We love it. Um, there's nothing like just curling up at, in front of the TV and crocheting at the end of the day and not having like huge demands. And, and lots of places to go. I love that. So, okay, let's switch the camera around. I'm going to show you a little bit about a little bit of what I'm working on to get ready. Oh, and next show that's coming up, in-person art event, um, is at the end of the month. It's Sunday. I hope I'm saying the date right. It's the 20, I think it's September 25th, Sunday. Um, I'll be in downtown Ames. For the Octagon Art Festival. So I hope if you're in the area, you'll come by and say hi. I'll have some real some new stuff um, that you haven't seen before. So um, yeah, so I've got that. And then I'm also going to be in Red Wing, Minnesota in October. And I'll share more on that later on. That's two weeks later. I don't have my dates in front of me. Um, I'm terrible. I'm not very prepared. But um, if you look up Red Wing Art Festival, it's Red Wing, Minnesota, um, you will find information for that show. So um, those are the two shows that are on the horizon for me that I'm really trying to crank out work for. Um, I've also got a few other little project, side projects that I'm finishing up for people that I can't share just yet. But um, yeah, so it's been a busy, busy time. Um, and I'm going to flip this camera around and I'll kind of show you what's what's happening. All right, we're back. First, I'm going to show you where baby girl is perched when she's not supervising me in the studio. Can you see her there? <laughs> oh, boy. She's all worn out from that chipmunk hunting. Okay, I'm going to swing you around here. I'm going to try not to make you too too dizzy but here are shipments i still need to open more canvases in sizes i needed also from michael's they have a nice um chunky canvas that i like to use and here is the studio table which is a hot hot mess can you oh my gosh but a couple of highlights I wanted to show you these for sure. So these are um, Sculpey beads that I made and baked. And I'm also going to do some little clay houses. Aren't those cute? These are already baked. They're waiting for me to paint. Um, I use these beads on my little plaques. Um, uh, let's see, what else do I put these on? Sometimes I even make jewelry with them, like chunky necklaces. But mostly I use them on my little plaques. And um, I also do some funky candlestick holders. 
that those will those will hang from little collars that go on candlestick holders but um here's some canvases that came in stuff i'm prepping this is kind of a stack of stuff that i just had the tripod on that's my gel medium that um i've got to open and i'm tripping over the garbage can Oh my gosh, it is a mess in here. Okay, so one thing I did get done, I'm gonna show you that in a second. Um, I've been noticing I'm really low on my um, collage papers. Um, so when I have extra paint left over, I um, try to use it up on some scrap paper. So I, this is, um, I don't know, I think this is just cheapy. Uh, packing paper that maybe came in an order a supply order I received and as you can see I had a lot of green out <laughs> green and pink and then I had this kind of um, uh, rusty brown ink out and so I just kind of use it up um, on the paper which sometimes it's more than using it up sometimes I'm having so much fun it leads me to just grabbing some more of that same color and I keep going but I really I love having my own collage papers handy I really love this one let me see I don't know if I can do that any justice but this is a um, sparkling water container that I saved part of and I love collaging with the thin cardboard I love that one love how that turned out and this one too this is more of the same um and I do some just solids I do some patterns just whatever I like to have my own marks in my collage material mostly um this is a little girl I drew um, some packing I think this is packing paper I'm really into faces and figures right now so I'm they're showing up everywhere I love this one too love 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 that pink yeah I did a lot of polka dots as you can see um and I think some of these are kind of sticking together but anyway I feel good about adding to my collage stash this gives me more options to play around with. This is, I don't know if you can tell, that's um, texture metallic texture paste by DecoArt. I really love that stuff too. So I will file those away in my little, my handy dandy cart where I sort my collage material eventually. I, well, today, because I need to get it out of my way. But I wanted to show you something that's kind of exciting me right now is I'm really playing around with, um, let's see if you can see her, okay. I'm playing around a lot with um, abstract figures and uh, doing some color blocking on the faces and on the bodies. This was just a sketch I did on the tabletop. Um, I'm playing around with proportions and hair and, um, yeah, just playing around with stuff. I'm going to twirl you around. I hope I don't make you sick. <laughs> But here is one that I finished recently. So this little gal is going to go with me to um, to Ames, to the Octagon Art Festival. I'm really, um, lo I love her. Let me see if I can get her close up on her face. I love her scribbly face. That left side of her hair is actually a map. This edge that's collaged, that's old mail like junk mail. I love the patterns in um, envelopes. Um, let's see, this is a tissue paper on her arm. She's just like really making me excited and I love playing around with kind of uh, abstracting the body a little bit. So that's her and then um, this girl, I did this one first. Um, I'm really into angels as well, and I'm 
kind of have this idea of some warrior angels. And she's even, her face is even more abstracted. Um, even collaged a new eyeball on her. I love her crown. That's some vintage paper. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really enjoying these faces and figures. Um, I've also been working on some florals because I love a good floral. I would, this one's my current favorite. I got really um, messy. It was really messy and fun to create that one. And of course the sunnies. If you see me on the socials, I've got those going. And oh yeah, I was going to, I'm going to swing you back around here. And I've got some, I've got to move this box. I really am doing this on the fly today, you guys. I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> Man. Okay, so I've got some angels going too that I have sketched out. And I'm using some, some references, um, some old um, sort of, uh, I don't know if it's, my husband said they're kind of like cubism, which I guess they sort of are. Um, but I'm referencing a woman's body, but just sort of breaking it down a little differently. I love her face. Um, and here's another one. So, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with these. Um, so these will be a combination of acrylics, some pastel, and probably quite a bit of collage. Um, I love that collage element. And this is my, one of my art journals. And I think I did a girl in here too. Yeah. I don't think I've shared these on the socials, but this is also when the idea was pretty new, where I was really um, kind of breaking down the ideas. Yeah. I like her a lot. I love how her eyes turned out. So, oh, and there's Callie letting us know. We have a lot of um, workers in the neighborhood um, doing all kinds of repairs and building and stuff. And with our windows open, she's just going nuts. So I'm going to go see what she's doing. And we'll come back to the table and we'll, we'll talk about some glazing, okay? Hey guys, we're back. Welcome back to the studio table. Hey, I wanted to answer um, a question that somebody had a while back about um, transparency in your acrylic painting. So how do you achieve transparent layers with acrylic paint? Um, and I'm going to share with you my favorite method. Of course, there are many other um, techniques out there. I'm going to share my favorite way of doing it. Um, and just a couple of tips on shopping for acrylic paints as well. So first off, I think, um, this may have been the, uh, journal page, or I also did some paintings based on this idea in my sketchbook. Um, this was a drawing that I had done repeatedly on different pieces of paper and then uh, I think I cut it in half because it looks like I've got the red drawing on the bottom and the blue drawing on the top. I um, think I drew these on some deli paper, so kind of a transparent paper. Um, not not necessary at all. You could just you know draw right on the white paper too and have an effective result. I think I was just kind of playing around with layers and transparency. But the colors that I then laid on top so that I could still see some of that flower through was um, by using glazing medium. And so um, I would take just a little bit of acrylic paint and a little bit of glazing medium, mix it together, and it gives you this wonderful, transparent, kind of see-through look. Now, before we get into that, I'm going to show you, I know a lot of you guys already know this, but this is just a reminder. And actually, every once in a while, I meet someone who did not know this, 
but um, with golden paints in particular, here are three of my favorites. These are the um, fluid acrylics. Now you see that little bar right there that's on each one. The point of that little bar is to show, that's actually a swipe of paint over those black lines that shows you the transparency of that paint. Um, and you can see my Nicola Azo Gold is kind of messy, <laughs> so I don't know if you can see that bar very well, but this is probably the most transparent of all of the um, golden fluids that I have. There may be others out there that are even more, but you can see how clearly you can see those black lines through that paint. That is a good indication that you've got something that would work really well as a glaze. Um, the orange and the green, the pyrrole orange and the permanent green light, you can tell that they have just a little more opacity. Not a whole lot. You can still see those lines um, a little less with the orange than the green, but when you're shopping for the golden fluid acrylics, that's a good clue as to the transparency of your paints that you're buying. Um, Nova is another one that I really love, and they don't do that um, swipe on the on the bottle, but they do indicate. You see how this one says translucent. Um, that also gives you an indication of how much coverage you're going to get. That's the crimson. So, um, and as you play around with more paints. You kind of get to know them and kind of know what your preferences are. I use all kinds. I use fluids. I use heavy bodies. I'm, I'm always mixing it up and trying new things with my paints. So I am really not a loyalist in any way. In fact, I love a good craft paint too. Um, especially when I'm working in my journals and I don't want to be precious. So I love like the Martha Stewart craft paints or apple barrel, anything that's, you know, affordable and not precious. So let me, let's talk about the glazing medium. Um, this is the one that I like to use. And this is actually a pretty old bottle glazing medium by Liquitex. Plenty of other companies make glazing medium. This is not the only one. This is just kind of what I happen to have on hand and a little dab will do ya. I'm gonna show you maybe with this drawing. So I tend to go half and half with an equal dollop of paint to the dollop of glazing medium. And let's say, let's try this turquoise. I'm hoping this will show up well on the camera. Oops, that might be a little more than I wanted to. So we'll see how this goes. So you're mixing your glazing medium with your paint and I'm not going to pull all that paint in. And it doesn't seem obvious at first when you're mixing it, but you are making this paint more translucent. So let's see what we get. Um, let's just try this block here. So you can see that, hopefully you can see <laughs> with this camera, um, that you can see the layers through it. In fact, we'll just bring it on over to the green. This is so exciting to me because you literally are creating new shades, new colors. Okay, so you see how we've tinted it blue, but you've, you've got that transparency. I just love it. Now, I tend to want to uh, dab. Let me grab a paper towel. I love an imperfect mark. So like, see how that red has that sort of weathered, worn look? That is because I dab it and kind of pull it back. Sometimes I let it dry a little and dab it and it'll kind of tear, which I also like. But let's see what this will do. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of fun. And you can kind of scribble into it. 
and pull it back. And you can always, you know, if you feel like, oh, I've gone too far, you can always go back over it, you know, with a little more of that glazing medium mixed with the paint. Yeah, so that's how I achieved that look. Um, a question I get a lot when we talk about glazing mediums is, well, how come, why not just water? Well, water is a fine way of thinning paint um, sometimes, and sometimes that's exactly what I do. What I have found, the disadvantage to just thinning with water as opposed to the glazing medium is water can um, break down the paint. Uh, I don't know all the scientific terms for how paint is put together, but it can make it not lay down as smoothly and as evenly as you want. It can pool and it can resist some of the things that you may have underneath. Whereas the glazing medium has a little more of a, I don't know, like a sticky or a gluey texture that really allows you to lay that down wherever you want and it doesn't get funky on you. So that would be my argument for investing in a little glazing medium as opposed to water. Um, if you're doing, you know, not a whole lot of layering, not a lot of crazy gluing and collaging and, um, and crayons and stuff, water may be just fine for, for just laying down exactly where you want it. Um, but if you're really getting into some funky stuff, the glazing medium will serve you well. So let's try another color. Um, let's see, what have I got? Let's do this crimson, this crimson with some glazing medium and see what we get with that. So a little dab. I really went overboard with that it's turquoise, you guys. <laughs> I'll have to go slap that in my journal so I don't waste it. I can't stand to waste paint. Okay, so here is the glazing medium and we're gonna do a good dollop of that crimson. And I mean, even mixing it, it just is so yummy. It kind of has this consistency of cream. Okay, yeah, and see, you can already see on the plate, it's a thinned out version of itself. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of that crimson and we will, let's see, we'll go over, let's just go over the top. This is just my sketchbook, so I'm not worried about it. It's not precious to me. And I do see a little bit of resist there, so let's see. That's so fun. It's so satisfying. Now, you can just leave that like that to dry. Another thing you could do is, um, you know, kind of carve into the, into the glazing medium. Get some funky lines. Let's see what happens when I dab it. And I'll pull it closer so you can see it too. Yeah, I love that texture. That's really fun. And I'm kind of doing this at an awkward angle. I usually don't do cross lines at this angle. <laughs> it's kind of where my camera ended up. So here we are. Okay. Oh, I like that. Okay. So let me pull that close. Hope you can see, and there isn't too much glare, but see how that crimson, it just like, it shifted all those colors that were already there. Shifted that orange, that red. Now if I were, if this were a final, you know, a piece on canvas, I would probably go back over some of that crimson, even with something else, like maybe a lighter version over the pink and the orange. I really love the way it looks on the red. So sky's the limit. It's so, 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 so fun. Hey guys, 
my battery ran out. <laughs> oh, brother. But uh, we, I think you got the gist of it. Um, at the end, I was just bossy and said, go out and get yourself some glazing medium. So I hope you will do that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I hope you all are having a wonderful week. Um, just stay creative, keep after it, and uh, I will see you again next week. Bye-bye.